Hi there students, it's Mr. Verzat. Today we're going to upgrade you to level 3 of the basic form building technique that I call the death touch of art. Let's review. Level 0, that is trying to identify forms in a complex form. Level 1, that is correctly placing the forms on the paper with proportion. So that would be drawing his head the same shape as his head really is. To do that, we measure the form against itself for accurate proportion. For example, if I were drawing this guy's whole head, to make sure that it's placed properly in the body, I might measure how many heads tall he is. To make sure his eyes are placed properly, I might compare where his eyes are to where his mouth edges are. To know where his face is, I might compare the height of his forehead, measure the forehead size or the forehead shapes against the head and notice that, oh my gosh, his face actually lands within like the bottom half of his head shape. Level two was taking this and playing around with these form relationships to make original compositions. Today we're gonna go to level three. Level three is gonna stretch your ability to draw what you see. So let's break down what we're gonna do. Here's gonna be a photo ref and it's gonna be a combination of either a photo of an animal or a bunch of different pieces of different body parts of animals. Here's your exercise. We're gonna have an upscaled version of the photograph, and this is no different from what you did before, except it is gonna be larger, and you'll have to measure against the box and measure within the form to get it accurate. Next, we're gonna take the next level of the death touch, which is level three. That is taking the information that you see in the photo and trying to reconstruct what the image would look like from different angles. For example, a top view, a side view, or a different view altogether. This one right here, when I say different view at a three quarter angle, kind of like in two point perspective like we did with those cubes. This takes the most creativity and there's some areas that I had to come up with in my imagination combined with how his form is working to make this work. See, we can't see his other leg. I had to kind of come up with where would his leg be by drawing through to the other side where his hips would be on the other side of this form. So as always, one thing that's very important to do is start with a scaffold. Uh, it's very helpful to know where some reference points are in your image. And so if we look at, say, this side of this bounding box, we see that he does not touch the top, the bottom, or the left, and the right. So I'm going to make a little mark over here to represent the edge of his body. I'm going to make a little mark down over here to represent where his bottom is. And then right about, I've got a th big thick gap right about here. So we could say that is about where his feet are going to be. Top of his head, right about here. Now let's find out where the left side of his head is going to be. Compare. Compare over here as well. And then let's just start breaking down where his, uh, his chin line is going to be. So not perfect, but I think it gets the point, uh, point across on how you measure a form against itself. Um, now it is pretty loose and sketchy. Remember to ghost, remember to drop those forms in, and now let's try a top view. Now these boxes are a lot smaller than, um, than the drawing here, and they're smaller than the photograph. That's intentional, because in order to get accurate proportion, you are going to need to, again, measure against your form here. So looking at this, we can tell that his head is in front of his feet. I'm going to start with that same basic shape that we had as a head. Let's find the middle of his head. Now his nose pops out of his head, and let's see how wide it is. So whatever is going to come out of this form down here is going to have to be at least a third in thickness. All right. Now how far it comes out, that's up to your imagination. But looking at it, I can tell that this is a cone that gets more narrow. So we're going to have kind of a shape like this, and it's going to come in like so. And make sure to draw through. There's his little schnoz. His ears appear to be back over at about this depth. His eyes look to be right about here. And now let's go for his body. There's room for interpretation here. We know that one leg is going to be farther left than the other but I'm gonna just do a basic kind of a cylinder type shape. 
Let's pull his leg out. It looks like his leg starts, or ends actually, about where his cheeks are. So we're going to see this cute little leg poke out. And we're going to see an arm that's behind his chin. And another arm that's kind of pulled up. So this would be the form relationships of a baby panda bear. Let's do a side view. So again, let's look at form relationships. Start with a head. I'm going to have him looking this way. His nose is a little starts a little bit lower than midway. Okay, so here's halfway on his on his form. His nose is going to start about here, and it looks like it comes down. And about near the bottom curve, just a little higher, is where that downward curve is going to go. So let's have his nose come out and end, come back in. Looks pretty rounded, too. I drew this rather pointed. Let's zoom in and take one more little adjustment. And he's got his little jaw poking out below the circle shape. Draw his little nose in there. Now if we look closely, we can see that his fur kind of tells us what's happening. Uh, he, his head is curving backward at an angle, right from that little bridge. And we've got these cute little ears. And now we've got his feet, which are in front of his belly, and his belly is in front of his back legs. All right, and so now what shape would his belly be? We'll go back to this. It was kind of this big jelly bean form, okay? So by looking at his belly, we can tell it's behind his head, so about here. And by looking that he's sitting down, we can figure his back is at a slant. Now that leg, what's it doing? It's going down and then forward, almost like a letter L. It starts about here, so down and then forward. Those cute little bears, they've got um, they've got really nubby little legs. All right, what's this arm doing? It's coming down, you see this little hard edge? Down and then forward. So we've got down and then forward. And we can tell that it's going to end below the chin. His head is jutting out in front of his foot. So break them into basic shapes. Now what's happening over here? This one is coming down and then way towards the camera. As a matter of fact, it looks like this leg is slightly in front of this one. So draw through, down, and then slightly out in front of camera. Let's do a cylinder. Draw through. And that is our panda bear. By taking those angles and kind of working with them. Okay, those shapes. And that's our panda bear. And we got that. We kind of understood like the height of all these different shapes in relationship to each other. And we had to use our powers of observation to really look at it and go what is going down and forward and which one is in front of the other and how does it compare to each other. Now we're going to do a different three-quarter angle. And this is a pretty complex form. And before I begin, you remember that cylinder exercise that we did? And also in the other video where I used a pair and I broke it into two separate shapes. Well, here's again just a review is how you rotate forms. So here is a pair. All right. And if we turn it towards us, like we're getting taller and standing above it, this guy is going to go down and this guy is going to go up. And here is our new pear shape. OK? We're taller than it. Well, the same principle applies when you're rotating something. Let's look at his head. So we're going to rotate his head, which is just going to be a sphere. OK? And here's his little eyes. And if we looked at this shape right here, remember, use your basic forms. That is a cone. OK? So let's rotate the cone. And this goes back to your cylinder homework. Same process with rotating a cylinder. Um, if we're going to rotate this corn, cone, this corn. If we're going to rotate this cone towards us, 
this shape goes that way, this shape goes that way, but they're also going to get thicker. So this guy is going to get wider. This guy is going to get wider. And that's a rotation of that cone. That's pretty much where it's going to be. Here's his cute little little jaw. Let's put that in there. We're not really going to see his um, nose. Here are his ears. So his ears are going to go this way and step out, stick out this way. Probably going to see another ear. And we know that his body is like the bulk of it is a sphere. So we're going to move that out. Remember how tall it is now. See how his back slants down? That's his spine. Well, imagine that center line of that spine. It's going to continue down like this. His little rump stops right about here, halfway through his big beach ball of a body. So that's where we're going to start to get that curve. All right, so his hips, if we look over here, stick out from his body. So I'm going to start basically where his height is, and it's going to go down and then forward, down, forward. Let's bulk up that cute little leg. And this bottom part is just a cylinder going away from us. So remember how cylinders look. Now we don't know what's going on with his other leg. I can assume that he's standing on it. Okay. So I'm going to round this a little bit. There's his other cute little limb. Let's just imagine what we might see. complicated forms or simple ones. The techniques still apply. In your case, you'll have a variety of simpler ones. And what I'd like you to do is use the combination of all the tricks that I've shown you over these last two weeks with this technique. Ghost using your arm. Keep it loose. You need to actually feel this form before you drop it. It's sensation based. That's critical. If you just drop what you think you see, it's not going to be accurate. Constantly measure against this bounding box to find out where correct placement's going to be with these forms. We're going to take this skill and use it to create original creatures.